How do you do? There is no fear in love. But many people don't understand that concept. They're afraid the other person doesn't love them, will hurt them, will find someone else. Perfect love, however, casts out fear. The woman in this story thought she had found perfect love. But that wasn't true until her heart and mind and life were unshackled. What do you know about this man, Jeannie? He's really rich, Mom. He drives a new sports car and he's in construction. Does he go to church? I don't know. Have you met his parents or anyone in his family? No, but I've met his little daughter, Laura. She's already attached to me. Her real mother didn't want her, but I know I can love her as my own mom. She's so precious, a little lost lamb. Jeannie, you have to listen to me now. Stay away from this man. He has a no character. What do you mean, Mom? He's wonderful and I love him. We're going to be married. It's a mistake, Jeannie. Please listen to me. Don't marry him. Run. Run now. Bringing light to a darkening world. This is Unshackled. True life stories dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. No place to go. That's the plight of homeless people. They sleep in public places or abandoned buildings, hoping no one evicts them. But those who come to Pacific Garden Mission find a clean, safe bunk for the night, nourishing meals and fresh clothing, all thanks to caring friends who send financial gifts. Even medical and dental care is given to resident guests in the mission clinic. Pastors and counselors introduce each guest to the one who will never leave them or forsake them, the one who said, I go to prepare a place for you. Meeting and following him gives life purpose. And that's what this program celebrates, going out to the world in 14 languages. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is program number 3201 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. Where do you think you're going? <gasps> to work. One of us has to earn a living. I'll kill you for that. Get off. Not exactly a picture of marital bliss. Far from it, as Jeanette Town will describe in this, her true testimony right now on Unshackled. Parental guidance is suggested due to some of the physical abuse dramatized in this true testimony of Jeanette Town. Why didn't I listen to my mother? She and Dad were first-generation Italians who came to this country and worked hard to be financially successful, raising us kids in a loving family. When I was a teenager, my folks bought a home in Yorba Linda, California. Family was sacred to my father, who had served six years in the Navy and loved me and my siblings. Dad encouraged us to excel in school and attend college, but they couldn't help me financially. So, you want to be a nurse, a genie? <laughs> yes. Well, my friend told me I can take classes at night at the hospital to be a nurse's aide. Then, when I graduate, I can work at the hospital while I go to college. Sounds like a good plan to me. Do you like to help people? I do, Mom. Ah, well, we may not be here. Your dad applied for a job working in Denmark. Denmark? Yes. We've always wanted to live in Europe again. Oh, but I'll miss you and the security of home. Ah, he hasn't been accepted yet. I became a nurse's aide, working in a nursing home for the summer, and then started college. Being on my own was exciting, and I worked hard to get excellent grades. I also worked as a waitress to cover my tuition and the small apartment I shared with a roommate. 
My first two years, I took general education classes. Then I began the nursing program. The first day, the instructor glared at me as she spoke. Don't plan on working while you're in the nursing program. You'll be training at the hospital part-time and going to classes the rest of the time. You won't have time for an outside job. Panic washed over me. I couldn't stay in college without a job. She was right, but I kept working. I got up at 5.30 and worked at the hospital from 7 until 3 in the afternoon. When I wasn't at the hospital, I was in class. Then I worked at the restaurant from 4 until midnight. I came home exhausted, but still had to study for exams. Some mornings I was so tired I didn't hear the alarm. I struggled to hold on to a B average, but who wants a grade B nurse? As the year ended, I began to get run down and sick. My attendance slipped, and I had to make up a few hours. If you miss any more hours, you'll be dropped from the program. Three weeks before the end of the year, we had a pharmacology final exam. One day, I decided to stay home, missing a two-hour class to study for the exam. Later, as I approached the classroom, the instructor intercepted me. Where do you think you're going? I'm going to take the final. No, you're not. You're out. You've been a tough one since day one. You kept working against my recommendation. Nobody works and makes it through the program. What makes you think you'd be able to do it? Oh, please. You were warned. You no. missed class this morning, so I've already filed papers with the college. You're dismissed from the nursing program. Please. I can make up the hours. I promise. There's no way I can monitor you in the clinical setting while you try to make up hours. Forget about being a nurse and stick to being a waitress. Clean out your locker. I felt as if my life was over. With no classes and no hospital work, I spent my days in self-pity, telling no one about my dismissal. I was too ashamed. Like a zombie, I went to work. Finally, I re-enrolled in the nursing program. Only then did I tell my parents. Oh, Jeannie. Why don't you move back home? No, Mom. I'm determined to be a nurse. But how can you make it on your own? Well, I'll get a job in a fancier restaurant where the tips are better and I won't have to work as many hours. Your dad accepted a job in Denmark? We're leaving in two months. You and your sister can go with us and live in Europe for six years. Mm, and miss out on my nursing career? No, thanks, Mom. I've got to do this. lying about my age and saying I was 21 when I was only 19. I landed a job in an upscale restaurant where I could earn enough to cover tuition by working part-time. The other servers were more sophisticated than I and dated the customers. One night, my boss at the restaurant invited me to a party saying I could make hundreds of dollars in tips. I soon realized that wealthy customers were there to pair off with the girls, but I managed to stick to my serving job, too scared to participate. Nick was a regular at the restaurant, and he was the most handsome man I'd ever seen. 6'4", he was like a god to me, and I was instantly infatuated as I served him. He paid with a hundred-dollar bill. Keep the change. Ninety-four dollars? You seem like a nice guy and all, but I'm not like those other girls in here. Hey, hey, I just wanted you to keep the tip. Well, I'm only working here until I finish nursing school. I heard you were the ice princess. Tell me about yourself. Well, my parents are moving to Copenhagen soon, and I'll graduate next year. I have a Ph.D. in math. My parents live in Switzerland, but uh, I live in Corona del Mar with Laura. Laura? She's my baby girl. I stopped my fiancé from having an abortion just in the nick of time. Then I took the baby home with me. She's two now. What about the mother? I threw her out. She told other guys they were the father of the baby just to get money from him. But Laura's mine. She needs a good mother. Nick and I dated a few times, and I met his little girl who clung to me. Although he dated the other servers, I loved him and knew that he was the one for me. Then one day, the woman in charge of servers threatened my job if I didn't go along with their dating service. 
So I bravely told Nick when I saw him arrive at the restaurant. Wait a minute. Are you telling me you're one of their girls? No! I've never dated any of those men. I said I'd work for her because the money sounded good and I needed extra cash for school. And when I saw what was going on and wanted out, she threatened me. Jeanette, are you a complete idiot? Why would you agree to sell your body to disgusting old men for a few hundred dollars? But I didn't. <laughs> this is just great. You know, you really had me fooled. I thought you were special, but you're just like other women. Inside, you're nothing but trash. He left me sobbing in the parking lot and went inside the restaurant. A few minutes later, he ran back out, looking frantic. This situation is serious, Jeanette. You don't know how dangerous these people are. They kill young girls who've seen their dens. Are they gonna kill me? As a favor to me, they're gonna let you go. But they could change their minds. You need to act now and get out. You'll be blackballed from every restaurant in Orange County. But how will I live? My parents are gone and I need to stay in school. Look, this is a matter of life and death, Jeanette. Just go in, tell them you agree, and then walk away from it all. I was so naive. He persuaded me that my life was in danger and I was a scared 20-year-old who believed him. We abandoned my car and I got in Nick's luxury car. If they followed us, I think we lost them by now. Can't I go back to my apartment to get my things? Oh, don't be stupid, Jeanette. They know where you live. Well, can I at least get my car? You don't need a car. I'll take you wherever you need to go. But where will I live? You can live with me. But it's late now. For tonight, uh, let's stay at that motel. Oh, please, Nick. I told you I'm not that kind of girl. Well, maybe it's time you learn. Can't we get married first? Grudgingly, he agreed. And the beautiful three-carat diamond ring that Nick bought me the next day was no match for the stars in my eyes, as we were married by a justice of the peace. If I had known that the man of my dreams would turn into a nightmare, I would have followed my mother's advice and run. We'll hear more about Jeanette's story shortly. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. That's the secret of unshackled, a good word in the face of impossible situations. We know that with God all things are possible. And because these programs go out to the world in 14 languages, millions of people in the farthest reaches of radio hear these dramas, people for whom church and the Bible are forbidden people who have never heard the gospel. And because human nature is the same, these testimonies electrify listeners with God's truth heard in the context of dramatic circumstances. So if you or someone you know has a testimony of coming out of darkness into God's light, write and tell us. Our radio committee will take it from there. Your testimony could change another's life, maybe even hundreds of others. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Write to Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. I called my brother and told him about our getting married. But I didn't call my parents because I knew they wouldn't agree with my decision to drop out of college. Nick didn't respect me. I could tell by his increasing rudeness and his short temper. We finally moved to his mansion on the beach, which turned out to be owned by another man. We were just roommates, consigned to a small room. Nick's deception troubled me, but I took care of his daughter while he worked. <laughs> 